Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in today's video what I want to do is talk about Next.js and Mongo. So basically what I'm going to do is just build a Next.js app with Mongo, full crud, uh, all the way to deployment. You'll see it's, it's not too bad, okay? And through it we'll kind of get to see a lot of sort of uh, Mongo's, I mean Next.js's features. So have at it and again the way I build this isn't the only way to do it like next year gives you a lot of flexibility to do things in a lot of different ways um, so yeah okay so first thing is first okay I'm gonna create a new next JS app so npx create next app and we'll just call it um, our app yeah sure Okay, that's setting all that up. Let me just make sure I use the right template here. But it looks like it. Yep, 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 yep. Set the thing up. Good, that all looks good. Okay, other things I want to install. I want to install Mongoose so we can connect to a database. Install Mongoose. Try to think of anything else I'd like to install. I think I'm pretty good there. Oh, that doesn't really. npm install Mongoose is the command. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called connections. Or we'll call it DB. This will be where we put our database stuff. Mm, actually, nah, I think it might be better to just do everything in one folder called utils for utilities. <coughs> All the sort of non Next.js stuff. Okay, so in that utils folder, we'll create a connection.js because we're just going to create our Mongo connection first. Okay, and I am going to what we do is in Next.js, what you can do is you can create a dot in not a dot env, you create a dot env dot local. Okay, and then you can just write your environmental variables there. So I'm gonna say Mongo URI, that's the URL for my Mongo database. I have a Mongo local Mongo server running. Is it still running? Let's check. Uh, yeah, it's still running. Okay, so let's do it. Equals um, MongoDB, that's the protocol. And it is hosted on localhost 27017. And we'll call it our app. And then we'll use today's date, which is September 22nd, 21. Okay, that'll be the database we'll use. And that's good to go. So here, we'll import mongoose. Yeah, actually, import mongoose from mongoose. Now, what I'm going to do here, and actually, no, I don't think I need that. Let me think about that for a second. Do I want to use ES6 module syntax there? I'm going to I'm, I'm going to not. I don't think I need to. Const require or const mongoose equals require mongoose. Let me think about that. How did I do this last time? I think I did use ES module syntax this last time. Okay. Import mongoose from mongoose. Okay, and here's going to be the nuance here. Like, I don't want to just do my normal, just like connect to a Mongo, state, a Mongo database and just like leave the connection open. Um, I'm going to use a function to connect whenever I need to connect. Okay, and I'm going to create my model in that function. And the reason I'm doing this is um, if I just create the thing freestanding, what's going to happen is that it's going to try to reconnect on every instance. And, you know, actually, technically, here's how you deal with that. There's actually a way to deal with that. So, because what happens is the development server hot reloads. So, at hot reloads, your code runs again, it reloads, and then it tries to reconnect the database. But sometimes, if you don't set it up right, your model will already be defined, and it'll give you this error that, you know, you can't redefine a model. That only happens when you're running the dev server on Next.js. But there's an easy way to kind of get around that. So now that I kind of know what that is, because I've done this a few times now, I can make a simpler setup. So let's just 
connect to Mongo the way I usually would. Okay, so I'm gonna just get the disconnect. Okay, so here we go. Um, Mongoose dot connect, and we're gonna use the, the the URI from the environmental variables. So Mongo URI. So again, process that env is the object where we can access environmental variables always in JavaScript. Process or node specifically. Process that env dot Mongo URI. And then I can, you know, pass in this, like, you know, use new UR, new URL parser. True. Use unified. Use unified topology. True. Okay, just like prevent all those deprecation errors that or deprecation warnings that show up. Okay, so that establishes the connection. I want to make sure that I know that the connection is set up. And just so you know, like there's two functions that connect in Mongoose, just so you can understand like how this works. Because you can actually have multiple connections in Mongo. So it actually there's a array called in the property mongoose.connections of all your connections. Whenever you use the connect method, it is always setting up that first connection. So it's not creating an additional connection if you run it multiple times, it's replacing the connection. If you did want multiple connections to Mongo, then you would use the create connection function, which would then add to that array. So this is why I don't need to worry about checking whether a connection was already made or already exist um, here, because connect will always just replace an existing connection in that first spot of the array. Um, if I had multiple connections because I used the create connection function, then I'd have to probably like check, hey, like, did I already establish this connection? Do I have too many connections going on? That kind of thing. So just to kind of be aware of that nuance in the Mongoose library when we're connecting to a Mongo database. And then the fact that you could connect to multiple databases if you wanted to. So that's cool. Okay, mongoose.connect. So I connected. Now I want to set up some messages. So mongoose.on. Actually, it's mongoose.connection. And mongoose.connections is the array of connections. Mongoose.connection will always refer to the first connection in that array. Okay, it always refers to the default connection, whichever is the first in the array. Again, just more nuances. If I had a second, third, fourth connection, then I'd always have to be like mongoose.connections, square, square brackets one, square brackets two, to access those other connections. So mongoose.connection. And then again, every connection has the on method to you you know to access events. So we're gonna say and on when the database connection opens. Uh, I want to give a message. Console log connected to Mongo, and then I'm just gonna add one more when the connection closes then actually well, no, let's just do it when the connection errors in case there's an error and then that means this receives the error and we're just going to console log the error okay and how do i know that that it receives the error because i've read the documentation okay uh, custom event listeners in node may or may not get past anything you just have to read the documentation for the library you're using to know Okay, so no, no magic there. It's just you know the library. Okay, so now that I have the connection set up, now I can create the um, schema. So uh, we'll call this. What should we make? Okay, um, yeah, we'll just make this a blog. So const blog schema equals mon new mongoose.schema okay and we're gonna want is like a title of the post so that'll be a string then we're going to want a body of the post which will also be a string then we're going to want that's pretty good for now and then 
why not? We'll say timestamps equals true. So that way they can be the timestamps, you know, like the created at the timestamp and the updated at timestamp um, in there. Okay, cool. So there's my schema. And now I'm gonna create my model. You can only define the model once because the model gets added as a property of the mongoose object. So it becomes like mongoose dot to do technically. Um, so what I would do is this. I'm gonna say const blog equals mongoose dot blog and if mongoose dot blog isn't defined then we're going to do mongoose dot uh, model and then say hey the blog the models will be called blog and we're going to use the blog schema let me just make sure that it's mongoose dot blog okay I have a blog post where I recently set that up. Okay. Mm, toots. Dot Alex said coder.com. And let's see here. Okay, let me just make a double check. Oh, it's mongoose.models, and that's where it gets stored. So it would be mongo mongoose dot models dot blog so I would want to check th whether that exists already and if it does exist I'll sign that the blog and if not then I'll create a new model so this way like as I'm in development mode and the, the server restarts every time I make a change in Next.js it's not gonna throw me this hey you can't redefine a, a thing error okay cool so then with that we can export uh, default or actually you know what I'll just export these things. Okay. And then just say export const connection, which will equal this mongoose object. Okay. So there we go. Um, we have those exported. So that's all well and good. Again, right now we're in the process of building our API. So I needed my database connection first. Now that's set up. Now, here's the thing with Next.js, like we're gonna be able to do certain things server side and certain things client side. Usually you want API routes because you're gonna access them from the client side and make requests from the client side. But there are gonna be opportunities we're gonna to have to make, just to just play with the database from the server side. And instead of having to write the ability to like get a blog post, to write like an API version and a way of getting it on the server. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the functions that do these things, and then I can use those functions in my API routes, but then I can also use them in my server side logic. Okay, so this way I'm not redoing the same work. So we're just going to make something called actions.js. So this is just going to represent the different sort of CRUD actions we plan on doing, which we need the connection, and we're going to need the blog model from. So we're going to need those two things in there. And we're going to want to create the certain functions. So essentially, our what are our CRUD actions? To be able to get something, make something, delete something, update something. OK, so we're going to say const get blogs equals. So we will be pretty straightforward. And I'm going to make these all async actions. Okay, and this is just going to basically return await blog.find. And that's just the, the, the mongoose method that returns everything of that collection. And then, so this is what that'll get me all blogs. And then we're going to say create a new blog. And then all of these need to get exported. So export cons, create a new blog, export cons, create blog, which will be another async function. It will receive the new blog. So whatever the new blog post is, that matches the schema. And it will return the result of await create, no, no, blog.create new blog. Okay, easy peasy. 
then we will update a blog. Okay, export const update blog equals async new, um, first we need to pass in the ID of the blog being updated and then the updated blog. So like, what does it look like? And then we will just return the result of a wait log. And again, I'm not doing any error handling. So that's the one downside to the way I'm doing this. I am, it looks nice and succinct, but I'm not error handling. So if there were errors, just gonna sh shut down the app. Okay. I guess I could do some pretty quick, I'll show you a way to do some, some quick error handling in a second. Okay, await blog. Um, mm, 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 mm. Although I'm going to do error handling in the in the in the, the parent function, so that's this is fine. Okay, await blog dot find by ID and date. Again, we pass in the ID and then the updated blog. But we want the new version, so new equals true. And update delete a blog. Okay, export const destroy blog equals async ID. And that's just going to be Oh wait blog dot find by ID and remove ID and that's it. Okay, I, I might as well add the show. You know, get one blog. Get a single blog. Just in case we need it later. Cons get blog equals async. But it's gonna receive an ID. Oh wait, blog.find by ID, and then we give it the ID, and there we go. Okay, so that will give us all the things we need. Okay, so that's good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need here right now. I think we're good to build the API now. So let's head over to pages and then all our API routes will be in this API folder. Now I want to be like API slash blog. Okay, so I'm gonna need two file. I need to create a folder because I want that slash blog endpoint because again, this is file-based routing. So it's gonna technically be from pages. Think of pages as slash. So it's slash API slash blog and that slash API slash blog that particular route will be handled by a file called index.js. So again, this file will handle the route, the URL, slash API, slash blog, okay? And then I'm generally using RESTful conventions, and again, the point of this video is not for me to review RESTful conventions. Hopefully you've been watching my videos for a while and you should know what RESTful conventions are, like the index, show, create, update route. Um, but if I create another file, I do square brackets, id.js, the square brackets make it a URL param. So this file is technically handling slash API slash um, blog slash id. Okay, so for those who've used express before, you know that the colon means a URL param. Okay, so generally this route, this URL is going to handle things like the uh, get, I mean the index and create route. So get all blogs, um, create a blog. So let's go create those routes. Okay, and basically the way this works is we have to export default an async function that receives rack and res, because basically it's an express handler. And we just, now the easiest way to do it is just to make it a switch statement. Okay, so I can just sit there and say, I'm gonna take the switch rec.method. Okay, and we'll just say, hey, the case where it is a 
get request. Okay, and then there's gonna be the case in where it's a post request. Because again, unlike Express, where I can sit there and say, hey, get request to this URL, bottom line, any requests for that URL will go to this file. So I have to handle the different methods within the handler. Okay, so, and then we'll have our default case because there's no other routes I really wanna handle here. So like for anything else, I'm just gonna say res.status404.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
it's in query. It makes sense in other parts, but for some reason here, it, I always find this the less intuitive. Cause it's probably because I've used Express for so long. Um, but yeah, so that's that should get me the ID. So now I can just sit there and say get blog, pass in the ID. So there's that response. Okay, now we don't need a post method anymore, so we need a put. So in this case, a put would be update blog. Update blog. And then again, we pass it the ID. So that'd be the ID of which blog to update. And the um, then we pass it the updated blog, which would be rec.body, because again, the request body should hold the details of the new blog post. Okay, just check and make sure my microphone mic it's been kind of buggy and uh, zeroing out volume wise on me lately, so just double checking. And then there's then we just have to do the delete method. And I'll just do destroy block. And that's done. Okay, so basically this API is complete. Again, right now I'm running in dev mode, so it should just be restarting and working. Okay, and again, we're noticing no errors from Mongo because basically anytime it restarts, it's checking to make sure that model, it's not recreating that model because we did that check. So that's all fun and good. Okay, fun and good. So now let's go to... Do I want to go to? I want to go to the insomnia. And let's try editing one of these blog posts. Okay. So I want to edit this blog post. Well, first let's just see if I can get it by itself, the show route. That works, good. Now let's update it. So that's a put. Okay, and again, the blog schema is basically a title. It's gotta be well formed JSON though. Title. Blah, 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 blah. And a body, which we'll just put uh, blah, 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 blah. And let's see here. Let's see, can does it update it? It matches the schema, so it added the properties. It's updated. Nice. And now let me delete it. Okay, let's confirm that it was deleted by pulling up the full list. Should only be two now. And it works, okay? So we just have achieved full CRUD API in Next.js, okay? In 27-ish minutes, again, there was some setup. Okay, so now that we have that, we can just start uh, making the pages. But again, sometimes I will need the API and sometimes I won't, okay? So just because you make the API doesn't mean you have to immediately use it. So for example, on our index page, okay, our main page, I'm just going to clear out all of this. I just don't need any of this right now. I want to keep it simple. What you can do is if you need data on the onset, so if you need something that's going to be there for information for the immediate loading of the page, there's no need for you to wait for the page to load, then make an API call to get the data and then render it like you traditionally would in React. Instead, get it ahead of time. So in that case, I have a function that will get me my blog post ahead of time. So I'm gonna import that in here, import get blogs. Okay, no, no need to actually call the API when I have a function that can get it beforehand. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export um, const, or actually export async function get server side props. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this and then we pass in the argument there called context. And essentially what's happening here is I get to decide what props this page is going to start off with. And what I want is cons blogs. Now a weird nuance is since I'm getting the data from Mongo, uh, Next has this weird thing where basically like it won't serialize like certain types of objects. So you really want to just turn things back into plain JavaScript objects. So what I'm going to do is this json.parse json.stringify and what am I stringifying? The results of get blogs. So essentially what's happening here is I'm getting all the blogs, but again they are coming from Mongo, so they're like a special type of array, special type of objects. 
uh, mongo mongoose model objects. I'm stringifying them into a JSON string because JSON.stringify doesn't really care about the type of object that it is. And then reparsing that string into just a plain JavaScript object so that way Next doesn't complain when I try to put that in my props. I still don't quite appreciate why it has a problem with that, but it does. Um, but that's that's essentially the quick and dry answer. So then you return an object, and in that object you define your props as a property. So inside that return object is a props object, and it's going to have blocks. Okay. So now, so but see this code. Anything that's on, anytime you export get server side props, and there's another function get static props that occurs on the server side. So that code is running before we get to the client. So this is why I don't need the API routes. I don't need to call the API because I'm already on the server. So I can just go call the mongoose function from here using my get blocks function, get the data, stash it in my props. Okay, so I'm really, I'm, it's gonna be more the put than the post where I'm gonna really need um, you know the API, not so much on the on the get, on the get route, no ones. Okay, so home, I'm gonna go get the blogs from props. So essentially, what happens is that this returns this. So then technically, my props is gonna equal this, which means I can then destructure blogs out of it. Okay, so that's why that whole chain of events happens there. Now let's see here. Uh, now I can just like map over it. So I can just be like, okay. Um, Now, problem is, I have some empty blogs, so let me just do this. Let's go clean those out. So let's just delete all the empty blogs here. Delete. Let me just copy ID before I hit the button. So that way I can just do that one afterwards. Good. Okay, so those should be deleted. Now I'm going to add some new ones. So let's go back to that URL. And we'll just add. Then I'll just say one, two, three. Okay, just so that way there's some sort of way to tell that they're different posts. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to say blogs.map. And then we pass in the function, and we have a blog post. And I want to say for each blog post, I want an h1 that has the blog dot title. And then a p tag with the blog. And I'll have to nest those in a we'll nest those in a div. So I'll take care of that. Put that. There we go. That should come down now. Blog.body. And there we go. So now if I go back to the main page, so if I go into the browser and go to localhost 3000. Okay, I see my blog posts. Okay, not fancy. I mean, it's not, like not the most amazing thing in the world, but it's happening. And the beauty of this is, since I did get server-side props, if that list of blog posts were to change, it would capture it because it's rendering on every every request to the server. Okay, so every time the server gets a request, it's going to go get those blogs, pass them as props, and then the pay the component when it loads on the client side will already have those props ready to go. You don't have to wait for a subsequent Ajax request. So it's not like you have to go boop, boop. It gets it all here, sends it all there. Um, I would only use get server side props if you know the data is gonna change regularly, because that means, hey, you wanna make sure that it checks for updated data every time someone asks for the page. If you know the page changes very infrequently, like days at a time before any change, or doesn't change for long periods of time, or never changes, then you're you're going to want to statically render the page, which is one of the nice things about Next. You can actually sit there and say these pages are server side rendered, these pages are statically rendered, which means they will only be rendered once at build time, not on every request like this page will. Okay, 
So I'm not going to get go too much further. So let's just create, be able to create new blog post. So what we need to do is create a button. So I'm going to have to import the link tag. So import link from next slash link. And we what we do is we'll add a link href to. So it's a little bit different than the React router link tag, which uses a to prop. This is uses an href prop. And um, essentially what this do is points to the URL, just like the two prop on React Router. So slash, I wanna go to slash new. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do slash new and then we're gonna make it a button. And that says new blog. Okay, so now if I go look at the page, but right now there is no page for that. So see, I get this 404 page. So to fix that, we need to create a new page. So slash new would mean that I have to create a file called new.js because the URLs are based on the file names. So a file called new in pages equals slash new. Okay, so that page is now, now exists, but there's no function there. So I gotta do the whole, you know, export default um, async function uh, new props okay whatever and we'll make this uppercase okay now in this case I am eventually going to need um, here we will make an API call because again we're not going to make that API call we can't create the new dog or the new blog until the user has filled out the form okay until the user has filled out the form so in that case i will have to make an api call here i want to do more stuff client side because i have to interact with the user while they're in the browser filling out the form so i got to put in normal client side react so it's going to look like a standard react controlled form okay but i will eventually need what will i need i'm going to need use router okay from next router Okay, and I am going to need, I think that's it for now. So do I need to export any props here? I'm not gonna export any props, I don't need them. So in that case, this page will be statically rendered. So it'll render it once when I deploy the site, and then anytime I use a request this particular page, it'll be exactly the same, because it doesn't need to be rebuilt. So it'll be pretty fast loading, okay? So again, I can decide these certain pages can be pre-rendered, which allows those pages to load very fast. Other pages can be server-side rendered when the data changes frequently. And that's kind of the benefit of Next.js. Like the parts of your app that can be faster, can be faster. Unlike, you know, other paradigms where you kind of have to commit to sort of one way of doing things. Like, um, and if I need it, I can write normal React and just do stuff on the client side. So I can do so client side, server side, and I can statically pre-render stuff. This is pretty cool. Okay, so in this case, I'm just making a standard React form. So this time I am gonna use state. So I need to get use state from import use state from React. It's because I'm gonna need to create state because I need to keep track of stateful logic on the client side. So I'm gonna say const form set form equals use state and I'll start off as an empty object with a title property that is an empty string and a body property I don't know why I wrote it with the quotation marks but it doesn't affect anything um, that's also an empty string okay so it's an empty form I'm going to need a handle change function that will handle the updates to that form, const handle change, okay, equals, and it's gonna be a response to an on change event in React. Um, so that means what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say uh, set form, I'm updating the state, and I want it to equal the pre existing state. So I'm using the spread operator to copy the previous state. So, but I want it to be a unique object. So that's why I'm making a copy instead of just editing the previous object because the way react works is that it only updates the ui if the state actually has been updated 
So if it's an object, an update means a new object, not changing the properties of the existing object. Okay, the whole reference versus value thing. If you're not familiar with reference versus value in JavaScript, go look up my videos on that topic. It'll make more sense after watching that. And then what I want to do is just update one property, which will be whatever the form property's name is, and should equal the event.target.value. Okay, cool. And then we're going to have a handle submit function for when we submit the form, which will also receive an event because it's going to handle an event, the submission of the form. And we want to prevent the refresh, so event.prevent default. Okay, and then what we want to do is make the API call to make a new blog post. So await fetch and that's going to be to slash api slash blog and it's going to be a post request because that's what you do when you want to make a new thing and we have to put in the content type headers so headers content type this tells the server that we're sending the data as json okay so application JSON, and then we're going to send over the body. So JSON dot string if I, and then we're going to want to string a five the data from the form, which will be stored in the form state. Okay, which is form, which we declared up here. So again, we're going to be binding the form to that. So when we submit the form, we already have all the data from the form nice and tidy in this variable here. Okay, the only thing left is I want to push them back to the main page after they're done filling out the form. For that, I need the router. So const router equals use router. That grabs the router. So that, and that I can use the router to grab like URL params on the client side, and I can use the router to push people to other pages. There's other things it can do, but those are the two things I ever do with it. Okay, so after this fetch is done, because that's where we use the await, then I want to do router.push and push them back to the main page. So now we have all the pieces that we need. Let's return some JSX. Form. Okay. Um, so we're going to have an input of type equals text. And this one's going to have the name of title because that's this is the the input where you write the title of the blog post and it's going to have a value bound to form dot title the, the to the state okay because it's a controlled form so it's controlled by the state so form dot title will always be its value but we need to update that state so whenever there is a change in the form Okay, this would normally be an on input event out of React. Um, on change, the React renamed it for some reason. Um, so what I would want to do here is use the handle change function. Okay, and then that's that's the input. So I also need an input for the body. So I'll just copy and paste this one. And I'm also going to need a submit button. So I'll do that. Except this one will be called the body. And this time it'll be the body. And then we're going to have one more where it's a submit button. Okay, and I'll deal with that. Oh, it's just complaining that I didn't make this an async function. You see there in the errors. Okay, good. Text, body, name, type, body, form, body. That's all good to me. And then this, I don't need the name property. I do need the value property because that's what it says on a submit button, whatever the value prop is. So I wanted to say create blog. Don't need an on change here. And okay. And then we want the form when it's submitted on submit to run the handle submit function. Okay, and that should basically allow us to create a new blog post. If I hit refresh, uh, where does it say I did that? 
handle submit. Uh, save this. Mm -hmm. That all looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go back to the main page and click new blog. Value object promise. If you meant to render a collection of children, use an array instead. Where did, I, where did that happen? Where did I pass a promise? Cons handle submit, then for me, change. Router dot push. And this should equal that right there, yeah. Expert default async function, new props. You set it with index for a second. Yeah, I don't think this needs to be async, so let's get rid of that. That's Oh, that's why, because it needs to, if you make a function async, it automatically returns a promise. Okay. Uh, there we go, fresh. Now what does it not like? Okay, so that tells me that maybe I was supposed to destructure this. So let's try that. Yep, and there we go. Okay, so I'm, I'll make a new blog post. And then there it is. Okay, so we create, and see, all of that is next. We didn't have to make a separate API and deploy it. We just did it here. So that's pretty cool. Um, and again, this page will be statically rendered because I never did got server side props. If I did need some props, I could have also just done like export um, async function get static props. And this would work the same way as get server side props. The only difference is it would statically render the page. So again, I would just return an object inside the object would be props. And whatever I return in this object would be props to to this component up here. Okay, so again, you can always write that server side function and then handle your client side function and the component you export to handle the page. And that's pretty cool. Once you really kind of understand like this function works, this like this is server side code and this is all, you know, your normal React client side code. And you can kind of think, okay, so like anything in here would probably need me to make calls to my actual API, which is why I would need this these API routes. Anything in here, I could just, you know, I'm a server side, so I can just import mongoose and do my operations there, or have pre-made functions like I did with like get blog, get blogs. Um, and that makes life a lot easier. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcore.com. Have a great day and enjoy.